Hello, I'm Chris, and this is my wiring harness conversion video explained. Alright. So this is the wiring harness I converted in that video. Right here. The charging system headlight harness. Now we need to understand these parts so that we're all on the same page. I believe that 64 to 71 should be like this with the horn relay right here voltage regulator right here now see we cut it out that's what the whole point of the video was starting with this is the way your car should be wired up got my new battery here when you buy new cables for your car it's gonna have these coming off of it. they're there for a reason negative it's gonna go back and ground to your fender about right here somewhere positive positive has this extra one it goes over to the junctioning block that's why you need to have wire diagrams and assembly manuals because you need to make sure if your car has it I know 72's won't have that but I think 71 and back should have this it comes off of the battery to go straight to the battery to a junctioning block this is where you run accessories off your car uh, an amp fog lights stuff like that goes over here back through the harness over to the horn relay bolts comes from the battery goes to the other junction block goes over the radiator comes over here to a mass splice right here another harness the mass splice it's got 110 gauge coming from a alternator and 110 gauge coming from the junction block they go into a splice right here and it's going to have one coming off going to the voltage regulator and then another one going right here to this uh, bus bar on the horn relay. Okay, so you got two going to the splice and two coming out of the splice. One going to the horn relay that's acting as another junction block and the other one going to the external regulator that we cut out. Now since we're right here talking about this kind of stuff, you got the other junction block comes over here and this acts as another junction block so anything that's run off of this will need to be fused because this is unfused from the battery notice all the fuses okay so just to try to better understand what's going on in this horn relay this is the wire from the splice coming straight from the junctioning block see how we have everything fused this Fused link is going back to the dash under the dash to power everything in there. This is my uh, ignition box. This is a lead for the amp meter. They all have fused fuses on them. Now the only one that doesn't have a fuse that in the conversion video, this is the white wire that comes straight from the number two position, the voltage sensing wire that just needs to be connected back to hot and uh, to keep it all in the harness, just ran it back to the horn relay. And we got our harness ready, we're gonna go ahead and hook it up to the alternator. So when you convert your harness over, you don't do nothing to this wire, this wire stays the same. It goes back to the mass splice. Very important that the, the blue wire and white wire are in the right place. Now, if you're new to this, the only way that I can even suggest to remember this is that this is an anti-American. Red, white, and blue is American. So this is anti-American, blue, white, red. That sounds stupid, but whenever you start getting into this, you're gonna forget which wire goes where. And you could totally screw everything up by having these switched. So number two is the voltage sensing wire and the harness we just connected this straight to the horn relay hot. Now you can jump this straight. Some people like to just jump number two straight to this right here. You can do that, but in my opinion, that really looks like shit. My opinion. Okay, so if you're wiring up a card, you need to ground the engine 
and the body and the frame all together. So from the factory, they had these little grounding straps right here. I haven't connected them yet, but they just kind of somewhere here on the firewall. And there's two of them. There's one on that side. Down there somewhere, they'll actually have a strap going from the body to the frame. It's very important to test this horn relay. These can be about $60, pretty expensive. So the way we're gonna test this is just like it's in the car, this has to be grounded. This is coming off the battery hot. 12 volts from our test battery. Ground from our test battery. These two wires are for the horns that are right next to each other. The small wire just grounds out, then sends power to the big wire that only goes in there one way to the horns. This plug going to the horns, going through a test light. And since the horns are grounded to the car, you gotta ground the test light. We're taking this wire goes back to your steering wheel with the blue thing on it it's gonna ground your horn contacts ground out this wire grounding it out in the horn contacts and it's gonna turn your horn on you'll hear it that's the horn part of it now it's got this other one that goes to a pink wire with a black stripe a little 18 gauge because it goes back to the like the key buzzer and the uh, signal light switch I'm not there yet but all I know is that it just stays hot all right so if you're going through one of these cars I can't tell you how important it is to ground this stuff out these are the three holes these are the three holes where the uh, external regulator used to go and uh, have these grounds on the harness that you need to clean one of these up so you're gonna have to ground the harness on one of these three and then right here you're gonna get that ground ready for your horn relay always go back with fine emery cloth and kind of polish the polish it off because you can't always get it with a wire brush wire going to the horn should have its own style plug horn relay has to be grounded right we got that little grounding star thing in there we're gonna go ahead and ground one coming off of the, the headlight and one coming out of the harness we're gonna ground the, these two right there getting them started I have another ground I'm gonna attach now on to the main point of the video we're gonna discuss what we did to the harness if you've researched this you've seen a diagram of where they jump the wires they jump F and 4 and 2 and 3 together this is 100% correct this allows you to do this and just change simply change the alternator to an internally regulated and you're good to go and that's basically all I've done was I just did these in the harness okay so now let's talk about that take your plug we're going to start by pulling f and four out the blue and brown wires on the ends now you want to strip back your harness and you're going to find the blue wire coming from the number one position this is the exciter wire on the alternator and then you're going to find the brown wire going back to your dash number four position all you're going to do is split the harness open and then basically all you're doing is you're finding these two wires in the harness and splicing them together. That's it. We've got two left, two and three. Take them out of the plug. This is another harness. You can see how the mass splice right here and we just clip that wire off. Now since two and three had to be jumped, this is two white wire going to number two position on your alternator. We just ran it back over here to the bus bar on the horn relay, 12 volts from the battery. 
Now this is the one where a lot of times you see them jump number two straight to the lug with the bolt on the back of the alternator. I didn't. I don't like when they do that. So I ran mine, this wire comes straight from number two and I just connected it back right here. Now, what this is, this is the lead to the amp meter. So I just combined them in one just to kind of clean it up. Now we got it basically hooked back up. If you've done little splices with the crimp, crimping tool, that's fine. But since this is gonna be our permanent wiring harness, we're gonna go back and uh, splice this the right way. I'm gonna show you real quick. All right, now real quick, we've taken the heat shrink off of these connections I made in the video. I guess you could do it like that, but I'm gonna take these off and solder the wires. Like this, but better. I'll show you. Now you're gonna take a, a wire with small strands in there. I think this is an, an 18 gauge, small stranded. Split the wire down the middle, be careful. Get one of these pieces out. Gonna join these together, but before we do that, get you a piece of heat shrink. Somebody was telling me you can get this real cheap at Harbor Freight, so I'm gonna check that out. I got this from O'Reilly, it's not too cheap. This is just the way I do it. There's different ways you can do this, but this seems to work real good. Okay. Get them kind of together now you're going to use that little single strand we took out to kind of bundle these up together figure out a way if for y'all that ever heard that spider web is stronger than steel that's what they're talking about is if a spider uh, web was as thick as this then it would be way stronger than a strand of steel like this is that you're heating this up and then you're gonna melt the solder and it's gonna turn into like a liquid and you're trying to run it into every single crack so if you're trying to solder this underside the gravity is not gonna allow it to go into the freaking wire so you may have to twist the wire upside down I'm just saying that if you don't know about that it's, you're not going to be able to do it from under here and don't worry about how it looks just make sure it doesn't exceed the diameter of the freaking heat shrink heat it up this is just one of several ways you can do this when you feel that wire get hot that plastic get hot that's good Okay, yeah, just to start, and then melt this and then let it flow into the wire. Heat the wire. And by your fifth or sixth solder, soldering job, you should have this figured out. Something like that. Heat shrink. Going from the top.
Okay, so now we got these bars uh, soldered and uh, heat shrunk the, the way they should be. We, we gotta kind of tie them back into the harness, get everything in position. You need to go get you a label maker. This was like $20 or something or less. Anytime you change the freaking wiring harness from what the wiring diagram says, you add wires, you need to put a label on there. Don't be a fucking asshole to the guy who comes into this after you because you're not going to live forever on this planet. All right, well, everything's ready, everything's labeled, everything's wired the way it's supposed to be. Um, you should have a better understanding now of uh, what I did exactly. Now, I'm not going to tape up all this until I have the engine started and everything's tested. And I'm 100% sure that ignition box works, 100% sure that um, there's no problems. But thanks for watching.